was just her body cavity that was absolutely filled with fluid. Those, uh, those muscle cells can continue to contract uh, even after the fish is gone. Uh, it's pretty clearly that there's, there's a parasite in her gill. I believe it just to be your, your normal gill fluke. Hey guys, so as you know, uh, my goldfish viola passed. And uh, unfortunately, as I explained in my last video, she got to a point where she was very, very close to death, not even moving or responding at all to when I touched her or picked her up, not even opening her mouth. Uh, so I decided to finish and, and let her pass, and I, I used clove oil and left her in there for a good uh, 45 minutes uh, until she was, she was fully passed. Um, and I'm deciding to do a dissection to get a better understanding of the cause of death. Uh, so as you can see, her body was like a fluid-filled water balloon. Um, definitely not not healthy she was very bloated up uh the last days of her life she was just you know lying on the ground very much like for the most part not swimming so i could tell she was getting very uncomfortable and uh you know to the point where yeah she, she didn't need to be euthanized so upon opening her up i was trying to be careful to not potentially puncture any fluid filled organs uh but when i did open her up it was clear that you know there at, at her final stages there wasn't any fluid filled organ it was just her body cavity that was absolutely filled with fluid um now this appears to be like a normal case of dropsy that the, the body would fill with fluid however there was no uh pine coning of scales even late late stage into the disease there was no pine coning of scales um and what you could see right, right over here is that there was actually a fistula on the body so this the, her body actually ruptured uh, and that actually allowed uh, a, a way for that fluid to vent out. Um, but this is not a typical case of dropsy. I believe this was caused by other things that I'll get into later in the video. Um, and one of which right here, as you can see, is you can see right here on top, you can see uh, her reproductive organs. And they don't look as they should. Um, they look basically just like like a mush. It's right on top of her body cavity. It's this little, this little, like, this little piece of white. It looks like gristle. Um, but... This is, this is basically what holds eggs, but it's, it wasn't in the correct form. It was very mushy. Uh, there was nothing in there. And what I believe happened is that I believe her reproductive organs ruptured. I believe she was egg bound because there was a point where I was expressing eggs out of her that she was not, a, uh, babe, that she was not able to express herself. And, um, I believe the reproductive organs ruptured, and that to a degree is the reason why she was filled up with fluid. The reproductive organs got egg bound, filled up with fluid as an inflammatory response or an infection, uh, as a response to an infection, and they ended up rupturing inside of her. And I believe that's why, on the last couple weeks, I wasn't able to actually release any fluid from her because that those reproductive organs they were not even connected to the vent at that point. There was no connection to the vent; um, they were just free floating as is. Now, uh, here you can see I took out the gut. That's where all the digestion happens. And I'm also taking out the swim bladder. A lot of people were thinking that there was a possibility uh, of, of her having swim bladder disease. I do not believe that to be the case at all. Her swim bladder looks just fine, doesn't look overbloated, and she was not really having too much, too much buoyancy problems. So uh, a lot of people were saying, oh, swim bladder, but no, it wouldn't make sense being swim bladder disease because swim bladder disease did not cause a goldfish to spurt water out of her reproductive tract like a water balloon. Uh, nor have their body filled with water. Uh, you can also see I just pulled out the liver. That's the red thing you see above my hand. And I also took a look at her gut. And you can see there's, there's a lot of green inside her gut because she was mostly eating algae in the last couple uh, days of her life. Uh, I didn't really want to feed her too many pellets because she wasn't really eating them to begin with. They were just sitting there. So I just thought I'd let her eat, the, let her eat and nibble on the algae that was around her. Um, and that was mostly what was inside of her gut. Uh, but for the most part, her gut looked normal. Her gut looked healthy. Um, I have done uh, a couple other dissections on other goldfish that have died, died for various reasons. Uh, the gut looks normal, but the reproductive tract, as I showed before, this is the part that looks weird. It looks looks like an empty sack. It looks like it was full of water, it was full of fluid, uh, but now it's ruptured and it's nothing. Um, but yeah, here you can see again, there was. it looks like there's a fistula from the body cavity straight to outside. Looks like at one point her body slowly ruptured. Uh, and that became, that became the way the fluid inside her started going out. I believe the reason that her reproductive tract did rupture or did get clogged up and start filling up with fluid is that she was egg bound. I believe the eggs at some point uh, created a blockage that did not allow them to get expressed. And this caused them to disintegrate, get infected, uh, basically cause an inflammatory response, fill up with fluid. Uh, and that blockage of eggs simply just could not leave out of her body. And I, I believe... 
Uh, I believe that's what caused them to fill up with fluid, eventually rupture, and then eventually cause uh, her, her body to rupture from, from all this fluid buildup. Alright, so now you can see me removing her heart, and uh, don't be alarmed by this, but the muscle cells in the heart can continue to contract uh, well after the fish is dead. Um, so you'll see that heart will be in the corner of, on this paper towel, just beaten. Those, uh, those muscle cells can continue to contract uh, even after the fish is gone. Uh, it's a little interesting, but also kind of a little, little creepy and a little weird. Uh, so I removed her kidneys. I wanted to take a closer look at her kidneys because one of the possible causes was uh, what people said was possibly polycystic kidney disease. Now, look, I'm not, I'm not an expert uh, in fish anatomy. If anyone out there is, please correct me or please identify anything that you possibly notice. Uh, but to what I see, I do see little bubbles in here. I do see what I believe to be cysts. And uh, upon putting one of the kidneys on a microscope uh, slide and, you know, mushing, mushing it up a little bit to get a better view of what's inside of it, I am seeing a bunch of these little beads all throughout. Uh, and from doing a little bit of research, I found that, you know, polycystic kidney disease can be a reason why the kidneys can fail and not function properly, uh, possibly being an additional cause or uh, part of the main cause of fluid buildup in the body cavity. Um, I also put it underneath the microscope just to get a better look at it. Didn't really bring much, but you can see on the top half of that uh, slide is where you can see a little bit of that, of that what I believe to be a cyst. I also took other parts of her body and put it on the microscope just to check for potential parasites or infections. And this is actually her scale, so it is pretty interesting looking. It kind of looks, reminds me of a fingerprint. Uh, but on her scales and her slime coat, I did not find any parasites or, or protozoa. Um, this is also a piece of her fin. I looked closely at her fins. I did not really find any parasites or protozoa or any uh, major infections on the fin. So... Uh, I also took a couple pieces from her insides and put it on there. I did not see anything out of the ordinary. Not an expert in fish anatomy and fish, you know, uh, health, but from what I saw, it looked okay. However, uh, I did put a sample of her gill on the microscope, and I did see, if you look closely at this little, this little bug right here, uh, I found what I believe to be a gill fluke. And then a closer look at a different piece, you can see... Uh, it's pretty clearly that there's, there's a parasite in her gill. I believe it just to be your, your normal gill fluke. Now, I didn't find very many of these, and uh, though a gill fluke can be harmful for a fish in the long run, um, it, would, it could cause a little bit of stress. I don't think it would cause enough stress that it would, it would cause all these crazy problems in viola. Um, the reason her kidneys had polycystic kidney disease could have just been uh, a genetic predisposition uh, or could have been other environmental factors. The, the root causes of polycystic kidney disease are not very well known in fish. Um, and then for the reproductive tract, the, 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 the egg, egg binding in that and the bursting of that, again, not entirely sure. Uh, could be some environmental stress factors. This breeding season was a little more aggressive with Bubba and Brad. I ended up moving them inside. Um, they could have caused additional stress. There could have been other factors. Um, a lot, a lot of things could have could have caused stress, which could cause problems with releasing eggs. Um, but it's it could have been just genetic predisposition uh, for the kidneys to be so messed up. Uh, but my final consensus is that I believe her cause of death was again a combination of her being egg bound, which is caught, which caused a blockage in the reproductive tract, which caused them to swell up and then eventually rupture and then eventually causing the entire body cavity to rupture, uh, along with poor functioning kidneys that could not uh, regulate the water in her body because there appeared to be cysts in her body. So a very, very bad problem with the reproductive tract, along with poor functioning kidneys, is uh, what I believe to be the reason that she passed, and I do not believe that any kind of antibiotics or anything else that I could have done uh, would have actually saved her. Uh, but the Epsom salt was probably the best thing I could have done uh, which is something I constantly did did uh, constantly did do, along with uh, a lot of uh, methylene blue just to kind of improve oxygen uptake, you know, um, you know, decrease stress and stuff. Um, but I don't believe any antibiotic or any other treatment could have actually saved this fish. Unfortunately, uh, from the beginning of this problem, it seems that she was she was bound to she was bound to die. Uh, but hope she hope she can rest in peace now. I'm glad she's not suffering anymore. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, this is Viola's dissection.